This video is to help you set up a government gateway account and link your UTR to it so you can claim the Self-Employment Income Support Scheme. I'll abbreviate as SAIS. At the bottom of the video, there are two links. One of them is check if you can claim a grant through SEISS. And the other link is make your claim for SEISS. Click on the link, check if you can claim SEISS. When you click on that link, scroll down and you'll see a green button, check now. Click that button. It'll ask you to enter your UTR number, put the UTR number, click continue. The UTR number is a 10 digit reference number, which is found on HMRC correspondence to you. It must be 10 digits, also known as tax reference or UTR, unique tax reference, tax base reference. So enter that number and click continue. Then put your national insurance number, click continue. And hopefully you will see a screen which says you're eligible to make a claim. That's good news. Click continue. Now here, if you have a government gateway account already, you can click on sign in and then you can put your government ID and password and continue putting your account details. This video is to help people who do not have government gateway account. So for, for those people on the, on the screen which you see at the moment, click on create them now. It's a hyperlink in the middle of the page, create them now. Click on that link and you will see You'll need to enter your email address on the next screen. Make sure you put the correct email address, click continue. And then you receive a code to your email address. So you have to go back to your email, keep this screen open, open another uh, internet uh, explorer or whatever, Google, whatever you're using, and log into your email, find that code and enter the code in the box. Then click confirm. After that, you will see the screen email address has been confirmed. Click continue. And then you need to put your full name. Click continue. And here it's important. You need to create a password. The password you need to remember it must be between eight and 12 characters and it must have at least one digit zero to nine. And uh, you must not use special characters like asterisk plus minus stuff like that. So remember that password because you'll need it to log in. You have to, you have to write it down somewhere, put it securely. So put the password twice and click continue. And then you will need to set up recovery details. Just click continue on the screen. The recovery details is a special word that you have to remember in case you lose your password and you cannot log in in the future. So it, it could be your place of birth, your mother's maiden name, which, whichever you prefer, you must remember the recovery word between six and 12 characters with no numbers. So after you do that, write it down, remember it, or write it down or remember it and click continue. And then your government gateway has been set up. That's what, that was easy. Please make a note of, of your government gateway as well, number, and save it securely. So we have three things. You have the government gateway ID, you have your password and your recovery word. Those three things you must save securely. In any case, you will receive an email with your government gateway ID, but not with your password and with your recovery word. So those three things, save them right now, somewhere securely. It's very important because after one year, two years, you will lose them, you'll not remember them. So save them somewhere securely, your government gateway ID, your password and your recovery word. Keep them secure with no access to anyone else. Now on the screen, that you see at the moment, click continue. Uh, most likely HMRC will ask you for the type of account. If it asks you for that, click individual and then continue. You will see a screen. You need to set up additional security details. Click continue. Those, uh, this, this is uh, the way to access your account. You will, every time you, you try to access your account, you receive either a text message, a voice call, or on your smartphone, uh, a special code. So maybe the best solution is if you, if you click on text message. Most people select that, that's, the, that's, I suppose, the easiest way. So select text message and click continue. After, after that, you need to, uh, you need to uh, click that it is a UK number, just say yes, it's the UK number, say yes. And then you have to type in your UK number. 
So after you put your, your number, click on the green button send access code. At that stage, you should receive a text message to your phone number. Just wait for a few seconds, possibly uh, a minute. When you receive the code, it must be a six digit code. Some people attempted not to open the SMS, but just to, to look, at, there's five digits. The five digits is the sender, not the code. So open the text message. Inside there is a six digit code, put that code in. Click continue. So now you've set up your security, click continue. And HMRC needs to confirm who you are, click continue. Now you have to put your details, your first name, your last name, national insurance number, date of birth. After you put them in, click continue. Now here comes the fun bit. You need to get verified by HMRC. So there's three options. Either UK driving license, UK passport, or if you don't have any of those, option number three, multiple choice security questions. I strongly advise you, if you have a UK passport, select option number two, UK passport. If you do that, then it's going to ask you for permission. Uh, please allow HMRC to access your passport information. You have to allow them. And then you have to put your passport number, your exact name as it appears on the passport. And the, I think, expiry date. And, and then that's very easy to get verified through that option. If, if you don't have that, but you have a UK driving license, even if it's provisional, then you can select uh, the first option, UK driving license. Click continue again you have to give permission and give the license details and that's relatively easy to verify with that option as well but if you have none of those two things no uk passport and no uk driving license then you have to select option number three multiple choice security questions so i'm going to give you that option because um, the first two are easy so if you have the passport uk passport or driving license please go ahead select first of all the passport if not the driving license continue and then get verified that way but if you don't have them, select option three. So I'll go with option three now. So I'm selecting option three, multiple choice security questions and click continue. And here you have to give permission to HMRC to access information held by your credit referencing agency. What is that? Every time you take a mobile contract, there is an agent, there's a few agencies in England that record who you are, where you live and what you do. So if you take a mobile contract, they record in that month, that date, you took a contract with, 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 let's say, with Vodafone or O2 or whatever. Then, if you open a new bank account, it's recorded. If you change address, that's recorded. If you take a loan, that's recorded. So you have to remember all these things in your life in the last few years, what you've done. So you have to give permission to HMRC. Click yes, I give consent to HMRC to access my information held by credit referencing agency that HMRC are using. And then uh, they will click continue and then you have to uh, find your address put the postcode that, uh, that you're registered in at the moment and ideally put the house number if you do both and click continue it will find your address automatically if it cannot you can click on the option enter your address manually there is a, a hyperlink in blue small letters enter your address manually in the middle of the page click that and enter manually if you cannot find your address if you just put the postcode, it will populate many, many, many um, addresses uh, with that postcode. You have to select your address. If you put the postcode in your hands number, it, it, gonna, it, it, it'll give you the, your exact address. So on the next page, select your address, click on your address and then click continue. And now it will ask you about your addresses. It will give you a list of addresses. It will ask you, have you been associated with these addresses? This means have you lived there or have you given one of those addresses to your bank, to, uh, to a mobile phone uh, provider to get a contract, you know, etc. So any of these addresses, have you, have, you, have you been associated with them? Have you lived or, or given those addresses to any banks? Um, most likely one of you will be correct. The rest will be incorrect, most likely. So you have to be very careful, so be, think very carefully which addresses you have lived or been associated with and uh, select all of them, if it's one, just one, and then click continue. After that, it will ask you possibly uh, several questions. It may ask you, when did you last open a personal current account, for example? So you have to be very careful and remember. That's why I, I told you if, you if you have your the, the, the UK passport or driving license, it was easier. So you have to really remember when you opened uh, your personal bank account. 
it may ask you different questions uh, it may ask you also um, when, uh, when did you take for the last time a personal mobile phone contract so you have to remember again it may ask you different different questions so answer those questions and click continue every single time if you answer them correctly then HMRC will tell you we have confirmed your identity great that's good news then you click continue um, and here we have to select how you want HMRC to inform you of um, notifications do you have to submit a tax return uh, you got a penalty stuff like that there's two options by post this option is the negative about this is that if you change address you have to notify HMRC they update their systems not so often and some letters may go to old address but the good news the, the positive about this is the, the benefits are that you will always see uh, the notifications because they come by post you open the letter if you choose your online account then even if you change address doesn't matter because it's online you can always access but the negative is that you have to remember to log in let's say two or three times in the year just to see if you have any notification I would advise you to possibly do you through your online account because people ch change address and they get penalties sometimes they pile up they become a thousand pound penalty I've, get, uh, I've seen people who come to my office and ask please help me I have a massive penalty from previous years so select your online account is better and just log in two or three times in the year so if you select through HMR, my online HMRC online account then click uh, continue uh, it uh, it'll ask you to agree to the terms and conditions at the bottom just tick the box agree to the terms and conditions put your email address type your email address click I agree and click continue and then to your email address um, they will send a link to verify you, your email address you can do it right now but don't close this window or you can do it later but in any case you have to keep this window because uh, the work hasn't finished we have to continue uh, for your government gateway account registration so you can leave it for later to, to, to verify address later so click continue uh, on this screen and then it will tell you that uh, HMRC will contact you through your online account but because you haven't verified your email address for now it will still send you letters so you can you can click continue here and it will go to, to the next screen but if you wish open another internet uh, screen and uh, log into your uh, email address and you will see the email from the HMRC which will look like this and click verify your email address then your email address is verified and go back to the government gateway registration screen don't close the government gateway so go back to it after you verify your email address when you go back to your government registration screen it'll look like this now we have to set up your personal tax account so click on start now click sign in with government gateway continue and then you have to click at the bottom continue to your account at the bottom of the page says continue to your account small letters in blue click on that it will open a page with your government ID and password I asked you to write down your ID you have it in your email anyway and your password so put those in government ID and password click sign in and then that's your government gateway account at the moment this account has nothing associated to it meaning that it's just an empty room you need to link your UTR you need to add a tax you need to add your personal tax to it otherwise you have no access to, to your tax information it's just an empty room with nothing uh, nothing in it so you open the door it's a gateway but there's nothing in the room so you have to bring in the room your tax how to do that click on uh, get online access to a tax duty or scheme in the middle of the screen should be in blue in this case uh, it's um, violet in my case because I've clicked on it so get online access to a tax duty or scheme click on that and then it will ask you what what type of tax you want to add click on self assessment including partnership and trusts and click continue then do you have a self assessment duty or number yes click yes and continue then it will ask you for your UTR number type it in click continue and then which of these best describes you click on individual or sole trader click continue and then 
you need to put again your UTR number in the first box. You have three boxes. In the top box, put your UTR number. And then the other two boxes, you have to choose one of them. Either put your national insurance or put your postcode. I advise you to put your postcode. The reason being, if, if, if HMRC will send uh, in the next screen, they'll send you a letter with security code to, to activate your UTR on, on your government gateway. To, to, to bring in a room, your ETR, you must have a security code. And the code will go to the address that HMRC have. So if you put your postcode, when you click on the green button request access, it'll tell you not recognized. So in this way, you will know that they have an old address. That's why I say put your postcode and, and if it works, then the, the security code will go to your correct address. If you put your national insurance number, no problem. You, 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 can, you can get your access, but then you're not sure to which address uh, the, the security code will go to. And it may go to an alt address. We've had many, many cases like that. People register, it goes to an alt address. And then you have no security. Uh, you cannot activate your uh, UTR number on the government gateway. So ideally, put your postcode and then click request access. And if you put the correct postcode, it will grant you the access. If it doesn't work, you can put your national insurance number, but it, it'll send a code to, we don't know, some old address. So you, you need to just go back to your previous address and ask the people to, to give you the, the code. Most likely to go there. So I would strongly advise you put your postcode, not national insurance. So in the two options, the, uh, on the top, you put your UTR number. You have no choice. You must put that. But then in the other two boxes, you must choose between the national insurance and postcode. I advise you choose your postcode um, and then click request access, hopefully you'll see this screen. You have requested access to self-assessment. Great, this means that the postcode is correct and they'll send you the activation code within seven days. That's fantastic. Then click continue. If you click continue, uh, once you receive the code, at the, at the, in the middle you have, in the self-assessment section, you will have activate your self-assessment when you receive the code after two, three, four days, let's say, then you, you log in again, you click activate your self-assessment and you put your code and your self-assessment will be active. Okay. So that's the screen uh, uh, when you click on activate your, enter your activation code, but you cannot do it now. You need to wait for, for the letter to come. So this is it. That's how you, you can link your UTR to your government gateway account and then you're ready to make your claim. Now, if you wish to make the claim, the claims should be available in open from the 14th of uh, May, but for different people, they have different dates. So HMRC are uh, sending letters to customers and the letters they're saying that they will inform you by email or, um, um, or by phone. And this is the email and telephone number that they're holding for you. So this letter is not nothing, but just to tell you that HMRC will inform you. Uh, it's a bit of a very sluggish system, very slow and not... A uh, very uh, uh, up-to-date, I would say, system. So first of all, they may send you a letter and they may not. In the letter, they'll say they'll contact you uh, by email or um, phone. Uh, in any case, you can link, you can click on the link, uh, the second link at the bottom of this video, which says uh, make your claim. And you can try and make your claim directly from there. But some people may be eligible to claim from the 14th, some people from the 18th. So uh, keep trying. If you don't receive the call or email, just keep trying and make your claim. But if you don't have a government gateway account, now is the time to do what uh, we showed you in the video. So good luck with your claims and uh, God bless you.